Hey everyone, Pow Wow Guy, Rob Phoenix here, and welcome to my newest show, The Weekly Pow Wow Update. And during this show, once a week, I'll be taking you through the next seven days of the week. Uh, we'll be talking astrology, we'll be talking weather, we'll be talking powwow charms and healing, and the moon and the signs, and gardening tips, and home remedies, and all sorts of things to get you through the next seven days of your life in the context of Pennsylvania Dutch powwow. So hit the like and subscribe button, hit the notification button so you get updated the next time the newest video posts. And as always, you can find me on my website, pagermanpowwow.com. Now let's get to the update. Hey friends, welcome to the weekly update for uh, Sunday, January 29th through Saturday, February 4th. Um, we're already at the end of the month. I can't believe it. Time goes so fast. Uh, <clears throat> we are in the second week of the building moon. Um, second quarter, I guess you could say, uh, which ultimately, obviously, leads into the full moon. So we're starting this week off Sunday with the moon in the sign of uh, Taurus, which rules, Taurus rules our neck, our throats, um, that sort of thing. So uh, you want to be powwowing for things, you know, any neck, throat, or because it's the building moon, you can do some sort of um, preventative stuff like strengthening your neck, you know, fixing your posture. That's that's a big thing. I'm kind of a sloucher, uh, but then I get a stiff neck. So we need to be more uh, aware of that and be a little proactive. So now's a good time to do that. Um, so as the, 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 the week goes on, the moon then moves into the sign, moves from Taurus into the sign of Gemini. Gemini rules our shoulders, our arms, our hands. Um, so again, because we're in the building moon, I mean, you can power off for issues, obviously, um, but you could also do something to, you know, work your shoulders a little bit, uh, strengthen your arms and your hands. Um, like, for example, I work in an office. So a lot of the day, I'm, I find myself, as the day goes on, I'm a little more slouched over. I'm typing on my computer, you know, I'm looking at various screens. Um, and so then at the end of the day, you see a lot of people in the office, like, uh, you know, you hear things cracking and such because we get all this stiffness and such. So we need to be aware of that and like uh, work, work on our posture. Um, it will make you feel better and make you look taller, more confident. Uh, so anyway. That's what the moon is doing this week. And then as uh, we get into, I want to say Wednesday, uh, it looks like Thursday. Yeah, Wednesday into Thursday, the moon moves into um, the sign of cancer. So that's like uh, like breasts and chest, um, things of that nature. So uh, just be aware, like, you know, even... Uh, you know, just whatever, whatever health issues um, go along with that. And then by the end of the week, uh, into Saturday, from Saturday, you know, Saturday, we see the moon move into the sign of Leo, which, of course, rules our heart um, and our spines. So it's a really good week uh, health wise to be aware of, you know, tensions, posture, uh, you know, and even with our spine. Um, so I really think this, this upcoming week would be a good one to focus on our posture, focus on how we carry ourselves uh, to reduce all that stress and tension that will build up here um, in the upper part of our body and cause us to feel pain and headaches and such with. Um, so that's the, the, the lunar stuff. Now, this week, weather-wise here in South Central Pennsylvania, it's gonna be a mix of clouds, um, more cloud than sun, um, less rain than last week. Uh, and there's no snow in the forecast so far. Um, so basically like Sunday is going to start off cloudy and end with a little more sun. Monday is going to kind of be the reverse of that. I mean, it's just going to be kind of hit or miss with the sun this coming week. Um, there is, there is a chance of precipitation. Let me check my notes here. I have a little bit of rain possible on Monday later in the day. 
Um, then the rest of the week is really just kind of cloudy, partly sunny. You know, average temperatures for this time of year, which range between 40 and 50 degrees. You just don't know. Um, and a lot of things can affect that. If, the, if there's less cloud cover, it will be cooler. Um, more cloud cover tends to make it slightly warmer. Um, so yeah, kind of a, a gloomy week ahead, uh, but no significant weather events um, in the forecast as of right now. So we're not going to see any kind of like wintry weather or anything. It's very unlikely this coming week. Um, might be a good week for doing something outside. Uh, despite all the work we've done on our property, there's always something to kind of clean up. You know, our our birch tree is always dropping limbs and it's whatever. It's just part of owning property. Um, but pretty soon I got to do some work. I got to pay attention to that garden now, the vegetable garden, because our compost isn't really composting very well because I got to... I, I have to stir that up, um, uh, mulch that, you know, mulch that in there and kind of stir up the dirt a bit. Uh, but as of today, this morning, the ground was, um, more solid than it's been. So it's actually kind of, I think the ground is, uh, so cold at this point that it's like rock hard. Um, and this has been the first day that I've noticed that so far, but you know, our, we're in a kind of a strange area and this is just we're now just starting to get winter stuff. So anyway, we'll see what happens. So that's this um, upcoming week. Oh, also Groundhog Day. Uh, Thursday is Groundhog Day, Thursday, February 2nd. Um, if you're from Pennsylvania, uh, you understand that this is a big deal for us. Um, it's become something of a, a national sort of cutesy idea, you know, will the groundhog see his shadow? Um, if so, then if he sees his shadow, it's always, if he sees his shadow, you know, we're going to go the full gamut with winter um, and it will end when it ends. If he doesn't see his shadow, meaning a clear sunny day, then six more weeks of winter and then that's it. Um, it's just a fun tradition here in Pennsylvania. Um, people swear by it. Uh, I think statistics show that um, Phil has been wrong more than he's been right, but it's all in good fun. Um, so just watch for that uh, sunrise. So you're going to get up. I have some notes here. Um, I actually don't have that many notes, <laughs> uh, less than I thought, but check it out. I did put a new link. I put a countdown to Groundhog Day on my website, phgermanpowell.com. So you can go there, see the countdown, and then you can, there's a place you can click on my website to go to the live stream of the actual event itself early Thursday morning. So uh, check that out on my website. It's right there. And as soon as you get to the website, it's like one of the first things I have there, the countdown clock. So you'll see it's winding down to the big event. Um, there you go. Let's see what's next. A good remedy uh, that's uh, appropriate for this coming week um, that you can make at home very easily for very little money is uh, a homemade muscle rub. Um, since we're talking about neck and shoulders, you know, and that stiffness and from being hunched over and such, it's a good idea to get, you know, make a nice massage oil for your, you know, these sore areas. Um, now you can do this very inexpensively. It's three ingredients, but one of them is optional. So you could do it with two ingredients. This is liquid coconut oil. And now I got this local at a store called Aldi. It's like a discount kind of grocery store that we go to. Um, but they have some really like good hidden treasures there. You can get like fractionated coconut oil, liquid coconut oil. So you can see that, I mean, it was only a couple dollars. It was super cheap. Um, this, you also want uh, peppermint essential oil. This here, I got this at Walmart. They sell it like um, near where you can buy candles and like carpets, I think, and picture frames and such. It's in that area. It's in that like aisle. Um, it's 100% pure essential oil by made by Better Homes and Gardens. It's peppermint. Um, so you need that. And then optional, it's kind of overkill, but just, you know, for optional is pure vitamin E um, oil. Now this I ordered on Amazon. Um, might have been like four or five dollars. I can't remember. 
Uh, the negative about uh, vitamin E oil is that it doesn't smell very nice, but the positive is that it does amazing, amazing things for your skin. You can actually just use this by itself and rub it into your face. Um, I rub it into my scalp because my scalp tends to get dry, and I also put some in my ears because my ears tend to get dried out and itchy. Um, it's fantastic for your skin. Uh, so that's just, I add it, but you don't need to add that. If you don't have vitamin E oil, don't worry about it because the coconut oil, the liquid coconut oil, that's already awesome for your skin. So all you need to do is get one of these. I buy these in bulk. You know, it's just a dropper jar. You can see that. Um, this obviously the coconut oil is your main ingredient. Well, you get the idea. Next, I'm not going to fill up this whole jar with it because I already have some made. And then the peppermint, you only need about, I would say, three or four drops. Um, oops. These uh, lids that they put on essential oils can be a pain. There we go. There's four drops in there. Um, and again, if you want, see that smells really good, that peppermint. If you want to add just like a, a tiny drop of the vitamin E, because again, it's already good for your skin, but this just adds extra, you know. Um, just give it a good shake. And then now you have this nice soothing. You can just, you know, put it on your hands directly on your hands, it smells really good, you know, and massage it into the back of your neck. And because of that peppermint oil, probably shouldn't do this with my shirt on, but you know, just so you can see that I am using it. Um, so there you go. It's a great massage oil, but you know, it smells really good. I mean, if you don't mind smelling like a big candy cane, it could be just like a, a body oil you wear. Um, so there you go. Nice massage oil for this week. Uh, take care of uh, your sore muscles and you can make these things at home. Only costs you a few bucks and you can make so many different things with these ingredients that you get tons of uses out of them. This is why I prefer to make stuff at home because you can do so many different things with it uh, for less money than buying actual pre-made products, heavy with chemicals and such. So let's move on. The uh, brow remedy that I want to talk to you about this week is one that you can use in conjunction with um, the sore muscle massage oil that we made earlier. Um, this is one of those charms. This comes to us from the Egyptian secrets of Albertus Magnus. Um, this is one of those brow charms where it states in the, you know, the charm is written and it states a very specific um, condition that you're treating. So these instances, I was taught you take that bit out and insert what it is you're uh, trying for. So I'll read the charm to you. Now remember, you would say this or mutter this, mumble this, while you're doing that sort of deep tissue massage um, because some brock work is like massage therapy. Um, and this is one of those examples. So while you're doing this massage, if you don't want your client to hear, you can just whisper it or mumble it, you know, say it three times, wait a space, three more times, wait a space, final three times, and then in the name of God, the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Um, so I'll read this to you. You can write it down then and learn it. Um, or you can memorize it as I say it to you. That's a little more traditional, but whatever. So here's what you say. A deer ran over a meadow to graze. He went to his green grazing place, when lo, he sprained his leg upon a stone. Now here's where you could say, when lo, he pulled a muscle in his neck. When lo, he dislocated a muscle in his back or shoulder. Um, when lo, he hurt his shoulders. You know, you state what it is you're trying for. Okay, so a deer ran over a meadow to graze. He went to his green grazing place when, lo, he pulled a muscle in his back. But Jesus the Lord beheld the scene and healed with ointment of lard and fat his soreness. And swiftly the deer ran 
as fast as before. So remember those words. Um, insert whatever it is you're trying for. This is a uh, this is for like sprains, muscle aches, uh, dislocated muscles, pulled muscles, uh, anything that requires deep tissue massage. So you know it could be a pulled calf muscle, and you would massage that really well while, while speaking this uh, Brauch prescription. This week, I want to give a shout out to a nice blog called P A foodlife.com and this is written by a Pennsylvania gentleman um, and he shares his experiences with Pennsylvania Dutch food and cooking and uh, he has a lot of really good recipes a lot of more obscure things um, talks a lot about regional foods and such so I definitely want to give a shout out uh, pafoodlife.com check it out enjoy it like I do um, and if you have a blog or if you know of a blog or a website or a shop or a product or just an individual that you would like for me to shout out, get in touch with me through my website, pagermanpowell.com. Hey everyone, thanks for watching the weekly update. Please like and subscribe if you're not already subscribed to my channel. Uh, click the notifications to get notified next time I post a video. And God bless you all, love you, and we'll see you next week.